When suddenly a high voltage is applied to air, electric breakdown takes place. That's what we all know as sparks and lightning. However, the very first stage of the discharge, the streamer discharge, is too fast for our eyes. It moves up to a meter within a microsecond. It is commonly believed that propagating streamers follow the direction of the electric field. Generally, they move from one electrode to the other along the field lines. This example shows the theoretical field lines between a sharp high voltage tip and a grounded plate. The direction of these field lines is very similar to the path of the streamers that move with velocities of hundreds of kilometers per second from the tip to the plate. The only major deviation from the path along the field lines is caused by neighboring streamers which influence the field. However, we have found that in some conditions streamers can do something entirely different and can actually move almost perpendicular to this field. We have performed the experimental part of this study at the AIST in Tsukuba, Japan. The setup we used to investigate streamer contains the tip plate shown before. The distance between the tip and the plate is about 10 cm. We mostly perform measurements in pure nitrogen gas or in air at a pressure of 133 millibar. We now use a laser to make a pass of ionization. This laser can locally increase the ionization density with a factor of 1000. After we have applied this laser pulse, we apply a high voltage pulse on a pointed tip. Now streamer will emerge from this to propagate towards the plate. We look at this with a stereoscopic camera setup to accurately determine the streamer path. What we now found is that under some conditions the streamers deviate from the natural path along the electric field lines between the tip and the grounded plate, but instead they follow the laser trail. This is illustrated in these images, where it is obvious that streamers often follow the laser path instead of moving downwards towards the grounded plate. This is also obvious in the three-dimensional reconstruction of one of the images. Now let's look at this in some more detail. Here we see a detail from one of the previous images. Next to the streamer and tip, we now also draw the theoretical equipotential lines in orange. The natural direction of the streamer would be perpendicular to these lines, as is indicated by the arrow. However, we see that the streamer moves almost perpendicular to this arrow. This means that the laser induced ionization causes the streamer to deviate a lot from its natural path. One important observation that we make is that this guiding of streamers does occur in pure nitrogen gas but does not occur in air. To better understand the physical mechanisms behind the guiding of streamers, we have performed numerical simulations. I can't discuss the simulation model in too much detail here, but let me just say that it's a three-dimensional model in which electrons attract as particles. Well, we could perform simulations in a similar geometry as was used in the experiments, and if we added a laser pionization into the simulation, we observed guiding just as in the experiments. Now the reason that guiding occurs is that we here studied positive discharges and positive discharges need a source of free electrons ahead of them in order to propagate. Well, with no other sources of free electrons present in a gas, the laser pionization is the only source, so the discharge is likely to follow the laser. However, in in gas mixtures like air, there are actually other sources of free electrons, such as photonization, and therefore streamer guiding is inhibited in air. Well, all in all, we were quite happy to, to get the agreement between the experiments and the simulations, and uh, well, we hope you're interested in the rest of the work.